Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start, so let's start right now. Why would we wait? Sing it with me. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of glory, come on. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Yes, the world, come on. Yes, the world. Well, bow down and say you are God. Come on, church. Every man. Bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? We can praise. We can praise you now. In victory, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of glory, come on. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of glory, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Yes, the world. Yes, the world. Well, bow down and say you are God. I love you, Jesus. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Why would we wait? We can praise. We can praise you now. In victory, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just, I just want to be with you. King of glory, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. King of glory, King, we give you praise this morning, oh God. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt your name this morning. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Just want to be with you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ on this morning, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith with your wonderful people, God. Father God, we pray that you give them insight. We pray that you give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the Word of God. Lord, you know the need of everybody that's tuning in on this morning meet every need you promise us in your word that my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus Lord your word says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want Lord you made us a promise that you'll do a new thing that you'll make a way in the wilderness and you'll give us rivers in the desert. God, me and Pastor Amy, we lift up your precious people, your wonderful people. We lift them up before you on this morning. Open their eyes. 
open their hearts, open their understanding. Let somebody know this morning that you are fighting for them, God. Let them know that you are right there with them in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the fire, in the midst of turbulence. In the courtroom, you are with them. In the hospital, you are with them, God. In the airplane, you are with them on the job. You are with them, God. You are with them. You are with them. You said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you even unto the end of this world. I pray that you bring comfort into somebody's life on this morning. Turn their mourning into joy. Turn their weeping into laughter, God. Lift the burdens, lift the weight from of this world that's placed on them. The things that's frustrating them and oppressing them and suppressing them and beating them down and discouraging them and sucking the very life of God out of them. We rebuke it this morning. We rebuke the hands of the enemy. Satan, take your hands of God's property. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Every principality, every power, every ruler of the darkness of this world, every spiritual wickedness in high places, we rebuke you, we resist you in the name of Jesus. The blood of the Lord Jesus is against you. Father God, have your way this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. We continue in our series on this morning. God is fighting for you. And on this morning, we're talking about these demonic walls are coming down. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Demonic walls represents you reach a certain place in God and there is a resistance. You can only go so far and no further. I'm talking to some people this morning. People in your family, they always come so close and they seem like they hit an invisible barrier and they can't go any further. Have you ever, have that ever happened to you? It seems like your life is just has just been going in circles. You were young and now you are much older and your life is just going in circles. You may be a young person. And you tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. And it just seems like all hell is breaking loose. Like nothing is wanting to work for you. you. You're allowed to have just a little bit of success. And every time you believe God, it just seems like you hit a wall. And you can't go any further. I understand that. And Joshua understood it as well. Joshua came into the same problem. Because the entrance into the promised land began at Jericho. You ain't getting in you ain't getting into the promised land unless unless you get through Jericho. And guess what? Jericho was surrounded by some of the biggest walls of their day. Historians say five chariots could line up sideways. That's how wide it was like an interstate. That's how thick the wall was. Can you imagine five cars lining side by side? That's a thick wall. And Joshua didn't have the manpower to break it down. He didn't have the equipment. And Joshua knew he was in trouble. I mean, that's intimidating. That can make you start to wonder, did I hear from God? God, did you really speak to me? And guess what? This brings us into Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, of course he was by Jericho, he was contemplating his next move. Joshua was looking at this thing and he, he knew what he was facing was impossible, was humanly impossible. That he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Who are you for? And he said, Nay, neither, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. I ain't for you, you are for me. Come on, somebody. I'm your boss, Josh. I'm the chief shepherd. I'm the captain. I'm the boss. I'm the head. I'm the leader. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. 
and said unto him, What said my Lord unto his servant? What are ye here to tell me, Lord? I'm all as right about now. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. It's holy ground. And Joshua did so. Didn't God tell him, as I was with Moses, that's how I'm going to be with you. Remember, God told Moses when he appeared to him in the burning in the burning bush, take your shoes off, Moses, for the place where you stand is holy ground. And now God is giving Joshua a verily, a very similar visitation. My God, this is Jesus himself appearing to Joshua right in the midst of uh, frustration and feeling limited right when he felt like he had limited resources. Right when Joshua felt like it looks hopeless. That's exactly when Jesus showed up. That's when the disciples were caught in the storm and they thought it was about to be over. He showed up walking to them on the water. But now he showed up to Joshua and he said, I'm the, I'm the man in charge. I'm your leader, Josh. I'm telling you, it took, it took the weight off of Joshua because as a leader sometimes, you feel like, oh, wait a minute. If this is going to work, it, it falls on me. It's on, it's on me to make this thing happen. And guess what? Jesus showed up. He said, no, Josh, it ain't on you. It's on me to make it happen. Nothing's impossible with me. No case is too hard for me. I know Joshua must have been shouting and rejoicing as he fell before the Lord. And now watch this, because this story doesn't end here in chapter 5. It, this visitation continues over into chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. They had just crossed the, the Jordan River. So the people in Jericho, they were terrified. They had, a, they had the place fortified. It was like a fortress. You couldn't break in there for nothing. I mean, they made it humanly impossible possible to break in. If you even get near that wall, those those spare men would have a field day. <laughs> you talk about you talk about those archers with their arrows. Lord, I mean, you I, only hell would have been worse than that if you'd have gotten near that wall. Are you listening to me? So so Joshua realized the odds were stacked against him. God always asks us to do the impossible. Come on, somebody. He said, take away the stone. You do what you can now do what you can. Come on, somebody. God is asking Joshua to conquer Jericho, to have these big, massive, intimidating walls. He's asking Joshua to do something humanly impossible. But watch this. God ain't going to ask you to do something without coming alongside you and giving you the winning strategy. He will show you how to get it done. Come on. God always asks us to do the impossible. And when we get the instructions from God and follow through, things begin to work out. Watch this, y'all. My God. So Jericho's, no one could leave or enter. Verse 2, and the Lord, this visitation continues. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given I have given, I mean, he's using past tense language. I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of Allah. Now, wait a minute. Only God can talk like that. <laughs> what do you mean by you giving it to me? Well, why am I still looking at these big, massive walls? If, if, if you've already given the army into my hands, I, I see these, these men up there, they look like, they, I mean, Lord have mercy, they look like Hulk Hogan, the wrestler. You, saw, you see the, the muscles on those men? they like six, seven foot tall. They look mighty strong and alive to me. And yet God is saying, nope, I've given, this is where faith comes in. Lord have mercy. He is able to speak those things which be not as though they were. Because if God said it, he has the power to back it up and make it happen. You. This is where faith comes. Comes in. This is where trust comes in. You got to take him at his word. My, my, my. Take him at his word. Glory to God. Watch this. And then he gives him the winning strategy. He says, "And you shall compass the city 
all you men of war and go around about the city once thus shall thou do for six days once every day for six days watch this and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times and the priest shall blow with the trumpet so in other words he's telling joshua and the children of israel you're gonna march around the walls of jericho 13 times for six days you're gonna march around at once and you ain't gonna see no change you, it ain't going to look like nothing is happening for you. Are you hearing me? But on day seven, completion, God's number. You're going to march around it seven times. And then he says, and it shall come to pass that when, that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people, all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, pass on and compass the city and let him that is arm pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns pass on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And remember the ark of the, the ark of the covenant carried the presence of God. God dwelled in the ark of the covenant and he dwells in our praises. He inhabits the praises of his people. The word inhabit means he dwells in it. He lives in it. And this is why we love to worship God on this broadcast and in our church here in McKinney, Texas. We love to worship. Why do we worship God like we do? Because in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. But then he tells you how to come into his presence. He said, come into his presence with singing. Are you listening to me? It's the protocol to come into the presence of God, to sing unto him to worship him in spirit and truth and in the very beauty of holiness. Are you listening to me? So Joshua, though, he had those men carrying the ark of the covenant, which represented the presence of God. And the book of Malachi, I believe, is either Malachi or Zechariah or Zephaniah, one of them that said, because in his presence was the hiding of his power. Lord have mercy. When you see the presence of God shows up, the power of God is wrapped in the presence of God. Lord have mercy. So once the presence of God shows up, if you know how to yield to the Holy Ghost, if you know how to allow God to work through you as a leader, once the presence of God shows up, if you hang in there and not be in too much of a hurry, I'm telling you, it only goes be a matter of time before the power of God breaks out and miracles begin to happen. The presence of God, the power of God is wrapped in the presence of God. Lord have mercy. That's where his power hides. And if you just tarry long enough, soon or later, the power of the Holy Ghost is going to be released in that congregation and great miracles are going to begin to happen. Somebody say amen. Lord help us Jesus. Now watch this. Joshua had commanded the people saying you shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall you shout, turn off the computers, turn off the cell phones. Come on, put them on silent. Lord have mercy, do something. Josh said, Josh said, there comes a time you got to get quiet. There's a time to speak, but there's also a time to be silent. And it was a time to be silent. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about at once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. He is obeying the instructions that God gave him. This is how you position yourself to get a miracle. He, he told the man in John 2, fill the water pots with water. And they fill it to the brim. And then he told them, pour it out. And when they pour it out, the water was turned into wine. What about the five loaves and the two fish? He took it, he blessed it, he broke it, and then he gave it to his apostles. He said, give this to the multitude. And as they kept giving it to the multitude, it kept multiplying until 5,000 men besides women and children had eaten from that five loaves and two fish that day. Praise God. 
Verse 12, I love it. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the rear reward, a red God, came up after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did this for six days. Lord have mercy. Can someone lift your hands to heaven and prophesy to the demonic walls that you are facing and say, you demonic wall, you getting ready to come down. You resisted my family. You resisted my forefathers. You kept us in bondage long enough. You hindered us long enough. You slowed down our growth long enough, our progress, but you coming down. I'm the breakthrough man for my family. You getting ready to come down in the name of Jesus Christ. You intimidated the nations of the earth, but you can't intimidate us. God is on our side, and we got the winning strategy. God is about to bring you down. God is about to knock you wide open. Open your mouth and prophesy. Tell these demonic walls, you coming down. In the name of Jesus, my God, and Joshua rose early in the morning, and the seven priests took up the ark of the Lord. Verse 14 said, and the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp, and they did this for six days, and it came to pass, I love those words, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day, they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Come on, come on, raise that music. Shout somebody. Somebody open your mouth and give him a shout. Somebody open your mouth. Open your mouth and give him praise. Glory to God. Shout for the Lord has given you the victory. Shout this morning. Shout unto God. Glory to God. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. My God, my God. My God, my God. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And the Bible says, verse 20, So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. The demonic walls were down. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before, before him, and they took the city. They took the city. God gave them the city. The demonic walls that held them back. The demonic walls that kept people from attending and being a part from being able to go in and out and make progress, those demonic walls fell flat. And Joshua and the children of Israel, they conquered Jericho. Jericho represented the Goliath of all those nations. Jericho represented the strong man. I dare someone to open your mouth and say the strong man is bound. Jesus said, before you can go into the house of a strong man and plunder his house, First, you must bind the strong man. I feel God binding the strong man. I said, I feel God binding the strong man in your home, in your family, in your city, in your country. There's about to be a breakthrough. There's about to be a breakthrough. I said, there is about to be a breakthrough. There is power in the name of Jesus. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah.
name of Jesus. Sing it with me. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. The demonic walls are down. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break, come on, to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break, to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break, to break every chain. There is a breakthrough in your house. There is a breakthrough in your family, in your finances, in your health, in your progress, in your career, on your job, in your business, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your relationship. He's breaking those walls down. Those demonic walls are crumbling. They're crumbling. They're crumbling. Cobra Cassiata, Rabba Mamandi de Bebe, Shiano Rubo Those demonic walls are coming down. They're coming down. They're coming down. They're coming down. Sing, break, chain. Break. Come on. Chain. Break. Chain. Sing it with me, church. Break. Chain. Break. Chain break, come on, six. Chain break, chain break, chain break. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break, to break every chain. Glory to God. 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 To support the preaching of the gospel, visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. That email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry Cash App account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888. And a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries. P.O. Box 2726 McKinney, Texas 75070. Me and Pastor Amy love you. We appreciate you. We'll never take you for granted. We look forward to seeing you again on tomorrow for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.